Okay, hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our release video for 3.3.0, our next release for PF2E. Uh, if someone out there can let me know that my audio is coming through, it looks good on uh, on OBS, but <laughs> I always sort of wonder a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take you through some of the really cool stuff that we've come up with. Um, I gave you an idea of what to expect at the end of the last stream, and it uh, turns out that that's not quite what we did. Uh, I'm going to start by putting in a little bit of ambient music. Um, so hopefully that's not too loud and overpowering me. Just let me know. And if it's not working at all, oh, it might not be working at all. So yet another Michael Gelfi uh, ambience. I can try and turn it up a bit. It's not really music so much as uh, the background is Haunted Castle, one of the tracks from his first uh, uh, from his first uh, album releases or Volume One. Um, anyways. Um, there were a couple of things I mentioned might happen in this release. I always like to say might because they definitely didn't. Uh, for instance, the Iconics are not done because we didn't get deities done, so we couldn't do the Champion and Cleric class features. But I think you'll agree with, uh, with me that what we did put in is kind of cool. So last time when we were here, um, I have new Amiri who uh, is souped up a little bit. She's got a couple of feats that uh, regular Amiri doesn't normally have, uh, as well as a unique item that I have given her. I have given Amiri this super short bow. Uh, it's a super short bow because it has a range increment of only 20 feet. <clears throat> so let's pull up one of the cool monsters out of the Battle Zoo Beast Theory. Uh, Oh, she, should, she probably would want to fight a demon. Um, and it's never any good when a demon gets close to you. Fortunately, Amiri has her short bow. So if we target, um, we can fire off that short bow. Uh, I mean, she critically missed because, uh, uh, well, that's not her forte. And I think this is probably significantly too high for her. Yeah, it's level 7. So she stands a chance of hitting it. Um, but let's say it was a little bit further away. It's just worried. So it moves out now past the 20 foot mark. Uh, Amiri will fire off yet another strike. Well, in this case, the range penalty is automatically applied. Um, we move yet another, move in past 40 feet um, and fire off again with the super short bow. Uh, and you'll see the range penalties uh, at minus four. Um, uh, the range penalty here you see is minus two because it turned into a critical miss by 11. I've got the modifier matters uh, uh, module on it. It's one of the modules that I kind of like and think will eventually be adopted into uh, into the core. Now, this de uh, the Crusademon probably can't fly, but let's say that it can fly. So if it flies up, we'll put it 60 feet above the ground now and have Amiri try and take a shot. Uh, so we notice the range penalty is now increased to six. Let's move it up to 100 feet above the ground. And have it fire off again. Uh, range penalty now goes up to 10. So it's kind of a cool new feature that we've uh, we've added in. Um, so you saw last time that it worked with the volley trait and just the volley trait. Uh, now we've got it working with range increments, so you don't have to worry about that. It's automatically computed for you. So that's a, a cool thing that we brought in. Um, one of the, the next big changes, which is in really no particular order other than kind of coolness, the Compendium Browser. So for those of you who have been using this for quite a while, you'll remember that the Compendium Browser took a while initially to load. And then we sort of did some caching work, some stuff to help make things faster. And instead of taking 15 seconds to open up, it would open up almost instantly, uh, which it does now. <clears throat> uh, however, it would still take time to sort of search through packs. Now, everything's pretty much instantaneous. Um, you click and it just goes. Open feats, open hazards, it's just all there. So the spells I hadn't loaded yet, that's how quickly the spells now load. It is essentially instantaneous. So this was a huge, huge change that will make using the Compendium Browser a lot better, especially now that we have everything sort of linked in from the character sheet. Uh, so if we want to pop open the Compendium Browser, uh, Amiri here you can see is, is obviously trained in a bunch of cool stuff that I need to show off, but that quickly it all opens up. 
Uh, in addition, I don't remember if this was a feature from this one or last one, but you'll see that um, when you select now, it'll automatically populate the area that you're selected. So if you're, you're looking for a spell, um, it knows the, the tradition's arcane, so it'll select all the arcane ones. And levels 1, 2, and 3 are eligible, so here are levels 1, 2, and 3. Um, if I go and select cantrips, though, you'll see that I just get arcane cantrips selected automatically. Does the caching effect searches as well? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, everything that we've done is fast. So let's say we wanted to know all the things that start with M, M and enter. It's it's really that fast. Well, I guess it's not things that start with M. Everything that has M in it. Um, uh, so yeah, there's a, a whole bunch of cool stuff here to, to sort of check out. But you can see that gets lightning fast. This is just how it's going to be from now going forward. So very cool that we've done that. Uh, so, uh, like I showed, Amiri here, she has spells, and the annoying thing with spells is that when we apply something like Inspire Courage, um, you know, it just doesn't work. So, Amiri here, uh, let's let's put her into combat with the, uh, the daemon. Great, she gets to go first. Um, so, because she's also going to specialize as being a bard, she's going to uh, Inspire Courage on herself. Well, maybe not on... The creature. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Uh, and then she has quickened casting apparently, so she is going to cast Produce Flame. Uh, so she'll roll the attack. We're just going to assume that it hits. She'll roll damage. And hey look, you get the plus one from uh, from Inspire Courage. Now it's not all broken down the same way because the, the roll code's not done. But uh, you'll see if uh, on the next turn, um, oh. or I'll just turn off uh, Inspire Courage, I if she were to, uh, you know, attack again. Uh, and we'll just roll damage. Uh, the plus one's missing. So the Inspire Courage now works the way that you'd expect it to work. Uh, there is a rule element that will cover all of this. Uh, in addition, Amiri, if you check her out, she is a dangerous sorcerer. So she has dangerous sorcery as one of her class feats. Because um, why not? Well, dangerous sorcery lets you, if you cast from a spell slot, so not from an innate spell, but from an actual spell slot, um, you add the damage to your level. So let's have her cast Fireball uh, on the daemon. So 66 plus 3 from dangerous sorcery, because it was a third level spell. So uh, yet another cool little, <laughs> uh, another cool thing that we've added on. Uh, now, one of the things when you're in combat, we'll say you get Inspire Courage. So here we go, feeling inspired. Um, we go to the next round and people are like, oh, it's expired. I wish it would just come off of her. Well, fear not, because we have now added a new system setting. Uh, so if you go into your system settings, manage automation, you can now remove ins uh, expired effects automatically. So now we'll have Amiri Inspire Courage. Uh, we'll go to the next round, and boom, it's gone. Taken off, disappears from her, disappears totally. One annoying bug that we sort of had is when we had these modifiers, if you collapse the panel, they'd sort of float there. No more. We've uh, managed to fix that. So now the modifiers will slide over. When you expand, they'll come back. Um, so they'll stay docked, uh, which is kind of a nice thing to do. Uh, other big things that happened on this particular release. Uh, so Beastary 1, totally finished. Uh, massive, massive effort. I think it's probably been at least two months of solid work. Uh, so huge kudos to uh, Abaddon and uh, Spartan and Tekael, and maybe a little bit to me, because I think I reviewed exactly one of the 200-and-something monsters, um, for, for getting it all done. So now the quality that you would expect out of Beastaries 2 and 3, uh, Beastary 1, you can expect that as well. Um, in addition, release is coming out, new NPCs for Quest for the Foes and Flame. If you're playing, don't look at that screen. Uh, but they are now built in, as well as the monsters from Pathfinder si Society Scenarios uh, Season 3, Numbers 8 and 9 are in the system. Uh, finally, the last thing that we didn't quite get done uh, for 
3.2 when we were doing all the updates to classes was doing the class archetypes. So again, excluding champion and excluding uh, cleric, the rest should be all done. So if you're going to use archetypes or you are using archetypes, go back and replace the, uh, the archetypes and the archetype feats. They'll have updated rule elements. They should work uh, correctly. I already mentioned deities. Oh, yeah, you, do, you guys don't like how I say that. Deities? Uh, <laughs> so that was um, another big change. Another thing that people didn't like, and one thing that we said we aren't going to add into the system, is automatically rolling um, when you hit or crit. Um, however, um, there's a really cool module that's come out that's uh, sort of turning into a test bed for interesting things or has stuff that, uh, that we just aren't including in the system for one reason or another. Some of it might make it in, some of it won't. But this is why Foundry exists, so that there's modules to extend it. Um, and it's XDY's uh, module. So here, the PF2E workbench, which is under xty-pf2e-workbench, um, automatically roll damage for strikes that hit. Um, so let's just get rid of the uh, Crucidemon, and we'll bring up a Commoner. I'd bring up Ezrin, but I beat up on him too much. So let's take a Miri here. She can target the poor Commoner, um, and she will swing with her large bastard sword. And voila, critical hit. Rolls two times, 1d8 plus 4. Um, and let's see if probably if I don't roll too high. There we go, just a regular hit. Rolls the damage. Uh, so for those of you who want that feature, um, if you want the auto-rolling of damage based on hit and miss, then now it is definitely available as an option thanks to that module. So again, it's under the PF2E workbench. Um, automatically roll strikes for damage that hit. There's a bunch of cool other stuff that's put in. Um, some of them have now been sort of, uh, will probably come out relatively soon now that it's built uh, entirely into the, the system itself. Um, but uh, ex expect things to come in and, and go out of the system here. Um, another one, if you haven't used it yet, is the NPC Mystifier. I really like this one personally. Um, so if I go to our Battle Zoo Beast Theory again, and let's say I'm going to pull out the uh, uh, Arcariot. Uh, if I hold down control when I drag him out, it changes the name to an Inevitable Monitor Aeon. Uh, and you'll see that's Inevitable Monitor Aeon. So that's where it gets the name from. Uh, I don't like putting the numbers on when I mystify. Lots of people do. It can do that for you. It can add adjectives. It can avoid putting in certain things. For example, um, you may never want to reveal that someone's a changeling. So if you drag out a hag that has the changeling trait inside his module, you can say, I don't want you to do the changeling trait, and it'll exclude that. Uh, if you want to demystify, it's just the letter M, and you can go back and forth and back and forth. Uh, you can also do it to Amiri if you really wanted. Human humanoid. After the last stream, a bunch of people asked uh, about what modules I use, and I had a whole list of them that were installed, and people got the wrong idea, because this is my testing environment, and I had just uh, set this up. This environment was set up for 0 0.9 um, slash Foundry version 9 uh, to do the testing from 0 0.8 to version 9 to see what worked and what didn't. So I had a ton of modules installed, almost none of which I use. Uh, I did say that in the next video I would go through and uh, explain what modules I use and why. So here they are. Uh, Battle, Battle Zoo Beast Theory, um, it's just a whole bunch of really cool monsters, has amazing art. Uh, it's a premium one that you have to, uh, to sort of pay for, but I found it totally worth it, so I bought it myself. Uh, the Cautious Game Masters Pack. This one I like because as a GM, I typically end up talking in my player's character because I'll just have them selected. Uh, with this, there is one feature that's built in that I use that makes it so that I can't possibly uh, type as a PC character. So that helps just a little bit with the immersion uh, for me being a clumsy GM. Uh, Curvy Walls is one that's done by Dfreds. It's a really, really nice one for making curved walls. It takes a little bit of time to learn how to use it, but once you do, you can actually set proper curved walls for pillars or arcs, um, and, and the walls look right. Uh, dice So Nice, I think everyone should probably be familiar with it. Uh, dice so Nice gives the 3D dice that you see up on the screen. Um, these, the next 
for our libraries, um, as well as I was testing the Night of the Grey Death map remake pack uh, for Narchi, so that's on here. It's not what I normally have installed. PDF to Foundry Importer, um, that's like 99% Fry Guy and 1% me. Um, he will be releasing probably tonight with Quest for the Frozen Flame Book 1. He's literally just waiting for the system release to come out, so it'll pull all of the NPCs. Um, it'll have Pathfinder Society Scenario 3-08 and 3-09, so it's right caught up. Uh, the PF2E attack card damp or uh, a shopping experience. This one um, I like because it has Taya Moon's shop in it, and that's a great place for you to go and find wonderful things for your players. Uh, this was a, a Patreon reward of uh, uh, of Drentals that is literally a series of shops from level one to level twenty that you can throw into your game, so you've got custom inventories ready to go. Uh, it's just something cool and helpful. Uh, the attack card damage, this is one that probably sooner rather than later will end up in the system. It puts this damage and critical button on the on the bottom of your, your roll card. If you're using Workbench, you might not want to have this on there because um, you're, you're just going to be uh, rolling the damage automatically anyways. It just expands the chat card for the owner and for the GM. Uh, the PF2E Companion Compendia, uh, this is another big one that uh, Tegale did that essentially covers animal companions and constructs and uh, all that whole side familiars and uh, eventually again this will work its way into the system for the system level implementation we want to have proper sheets for all of these things this is uh, we'll say a stand-in for now eventually it will cover off everything that we want um, in the system with specialized sheets but for now you can make actors and, and use this module to build everything the way that it needs to be built it's pretty robust at this point uh, the PF2E expansion pack, I just want to highlight this again. There's a ton of amazing creators, some of them like Luis Loza, who uh, who, who either work for or freelance for, for Paizo. Uh, they've put up third-party material uh, for sale in a whole bunch of places like DMs Guild. They've let us put it into Foundry for free, just because they like what we've done with the system and how we represent things. So... Uh, if you happen to use this, you like things like the Panol, go and buy it. It's a couple of bucks. It supports the people who are contributing, who have given freely of their intellectual property just so we can put it into Foundry for you. Uh, PF2E F is for flat-footed. Uh, this is probably one that's, uh, I guess, no longer named correctly. This is the repository for pretty much any keybind that you could want in the system. We're over 100 now, I think. So if you go, once you have this installed, you go to configure controls, uh, 96. So there's 96 different keybinds that you can set um, for all the different conditions. If there's things that you use regularly, it's all sort of built in, uh, all the different actions. And this is what a player can do. So if you have a player who's a swashbuckler who uses Bon Mott all the time, they can literally just select Bon Mott, keybind it to, I don't know, B for themselves, and then it'll run the macro. Uh, modifiers matter. I uh, mentioned this earlier. I sort of highlighted where if the modifier changes the degree of success, um, that'll be shown. One new feature for the latest release, if you want it not to discriminate between a fail and a critical fail, because there's only a couple of places where that really truly matters, uh, then you can put it in, in there. You might want to know. It's nice sort of to have a, the big bad attack you, and thanks to Inspire Defense, uh, that critical hit turned into... Uh, uh, a success. It's a little bit less inspiring when that inspire courage turned your critical failure into a failure, unless you happen to have a failure effect. Um, persistent damage module. Uh, the, the healing aspect of this has been brought over or ported over, uh, but this one lets you do persistent damage really, really easily. This is something that, again, will eventually make its way into the system. It just hasn't yet because it takes time and dev effort and this works. Um, so a lot of times if there's things that are working really solidly, we just leave them alone until we have time to put them in and really properly. Um, again, the workbench I've highlighted a bunch of times. Uh, there's a whole bunch of cool features in here that even I like. It's a really quick way to get things out without it being built into core. I want to try and convince XDY to put more of it into core, uh, but that's up to him. <laughs> um, the pings module. Uh, everybody likes pings. This is one that it looks like it'll become uh, part of the Foundry core software for version 10. So that's good. It'll be another one gone. Quick insert. Everyone was wondering how I was doing all the quick drag and drops last, uh, last video. Control space, type in what you want, and you can sort of get it, pull it out, drag and drop. Um, works for feats, works for spells, works for pretty much anything. It is, there's no filter on it. So if you search for something, it searches for absolutely everything. So if you want to say, put um, Inspire Courage on your macro bar, you can put in Inspire Courage 
and it'll start to shrink down the list, but you just need to know that you want to pull in Inspire Courage, um, the spell effects. Yes, and uh, that, that control space you can re rekey bind to whatever you like. I just am using the default because I've gotten used to it. Um, tension Pool, this is one that uh, I like. Uh, S. Doran made a really, really cool module that does tension dice uh, based on Angry GM's uh, Tension Pool rules. I used it extensively in Malevolence. I'm using it right now in Abomination Vaults. It's something that I just like to add as GM. It's not part of the Pathfinder rule sets, but he did do some custom coding specifically on my request so that I could use Fate Die in, in the way that I wanted to play it in my scenario, so I appreciate that. Um, token Action HUD, Heads Up Display, that's another one that I'll say Drentil is maintaining. Uh, he will tell you infinitely he is not the author, he just keeps making it work for now. Uh, it does all of this stuff up top. As a GM, I use it a lot less. Uh, for the GM, I typically open the character sheets because it's easy enough for me to hit C, be able to read through, not miss things. Um, and Torch. Uh, Torch I don't use so much anymore because I can just use a macro to, to cover it off, but it's there. It creates the nice little flame icon in the top corner. Uh, and those are the modules that I use or consider using on a regular basis in most of my games. Uh, for a bunch of them, I'll use for Abomination Vaults, Narchie's Map Packs. Um, they're amazing. People were, were looking at the logo, so the logo that you see at the bottom, um, this side, over here. Uh, he designed that as well as the one on the open and close screen. As for what is coming up in uh, our, our next set of releases, uh, there's a bunch of things that we're sort of thinking of trying to do for the next round. I'm not going to commit to any of them. Uh, one of them is kind of exciting for us. I don't know if we can pull it off in a single iteration, but we're really thinking about making embeddable items. Uh, that might not mean a lot to most of you, but to turn that into something that makes sense or that you'll want to use, uh, let's say you have a rune. We can make that rune embeddable. We can lock it to say it can only go on weapons or certain types of weapons. Uh, then you drag the rune onto the weapon and it's on there and you want to remove the rune, you drag it off. So these will be containers that can hold rule elements. So if you put on the striking rune, it'll set the striking rule element. If you put on the wounding rune, it will have the code in it to run the wounding rune element, so you don't have to put it in by hand. Yeah, it would be amazing. Um, I'm definitely not promising that's coming out in two weeks. It's a big project. It might work, it might not. Um, other things that we're, the, we're really hoping to get out, um, deities, uh, We'd like to make those an item so that we can finish off the Cleric and Champion classes. It just got pushed to the wayside to do some of the cool new stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of rework that we want to do. We really want to redo all of the lore skills uh, so that lores can be addressed the same way that other skills can. Right now they're just text entries. It doesn't work well for rule elements or, or, or a bunch of things like unmistakable lore uh, or taking additional lore and having the automatic increments always happen. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of cool things coming out. Data entry is probably going to slow down a little bit. There's not a ton to get in. I'm going to start working on the Pathfinder Society scenarios, but I feel like our data entry leads really deserve a bit of a break. Uh, plus, if we go the embeddable items route, there's going to be a whole bunch of changes to be made. Uh, and another couple cool things that I'm not going to mention because I don't know if they'll happen or not. Plus, it's always neat to hop on these streams and show off some surprises that none of you knew were coming. Anyways, hopefully that lets you know what is coming uh, in the near future. If anyone has any questions, I will stick around and chat for a minute or two. And otherwise, um, I will wish you all a pleasant evening. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed and look forward to um, <laughs> look, look forward to seeing what's coming next. I mean, I am. Okay, so other than that, um, I'll just wish everyone a good evening. Again, the music here, um, it was Michael Gelfi. Uh, this map that I'm using, this is one of the, the Paizo maps that uh, I like. It's the monastery map. This is, I want to say, the lower floor of the monastery. It's kind of a cool one. Maybe I'll switch it up for the next, uh, for the next live stream. Um, try and showcase some of the other cool things. I'd love to show off some of Narchi's maps, but uh, spoilers. So <laughs> if I use the Paizo ones, then I'm, I'm pretty safe. Well, with that, 
have a wonderful evening and I look forward to uh, seeing everybody in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.